In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Drupal on your local laptop or desktop computer. Since personal computers are not web servers, the first thing we'll need to do is install a suitable web server stack on your PC. This will effectively turn your computer into a web server capable of running Drupal. There are many different packages for doing this, such as using WAMP for a Windows PC, MAMP on a Mac, or the multi-OS capable XAMPP. True power users will even use virtual machines such as VirtualBox to install a complete server class LAMP stack that can accurately mimic various production servers. But to get started, we're going to use a simple solution that is tuned specifically to work with Drupal, Acquia's DAMP stack. This package works on all Windows, Mac, and even Linux and Unix machines. So while the demo in this video will be on a Windows PC, the steps are nearly identical on other platforms. The first thing that we need to do is to download the DAMP stack. We do that by going to Acquia.com and clicking on Downloads. Here we'll see that there are several different versions that we can install. If this is your first time installing the DAMP stack, I recommend using the top two, the stack installer for Windows or the stack installer for the Mac OS. Since I'm using a Windows machine, I'm going to go ahead and use the stack installer for Windows and just click Download. Save my file, and now it'll start downloading. And this may take a few minutes. Now that the DAMP stack installer is finished downloading, I can click to launch it. Now what's going to happen next is the stack installer is going to take us through several options. For the most part, we're just going to leave the defaults, although if you're an expert user, you can change them if you want to. Go ahead and click Next, and we see the list of software applications the stack installer is going to put on our computer. Now we get to the licensing. What's kind of interesting about this particular page is instead of being one long license agreement like you'll see in typical software, it's actually installing several different pieces of software, so it gives you links to each one of these licenses. Because each one of these is an open source license, they're pretty liberal, so I'm just going to go ahead and accept it and click Next. Now it's asking us where we want to do the install. The defaults are fine. Click Next. It asks which ports we want our web server listening to. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Here it's going to ask for some default information for your main website. We're not actually going to even be using this website, but for the sake of consistency, I'm going to go ahead and put some information in here anyway. Under username, I'm just going to use admin, password of admin, confirm of admin. And I should say that for this, I'm just going to leave it simple because it's running on my local machine. You would not want to use such simple passwords and usernames on a production server. But because we're just running this on our local computer, we don't really have any real security threats, so I'm just going to use some simple usernames and passwords. The last thing we're going to want to do is put in an email address. I'm just going to go ahead and put in an example one for this tutorial. I click Next. We want to verify the information that we're going to be using. And now we're going to start into our install. This is going to take a few minutes. Now that the installer has completed its work, we can launch the stack control panel. Simply click Finish. This will take a few moments to boot up. Now it's done. We now have a complete web server running on our local PC, robust enough to run Drupal. The installer has even created our first Drupal website. To see it, we simply click on Go to My Site. And now we see that we have a Drupal site and web pages that are being generated off of our local web server we just added to our PC. We can tell that by looking at the URL where it says localhost. Now what you're seeing here is this is Acquia Drupal. Acquia Drupal is a special distribution of Drupal that's added several things beyond what Core Drupal offers. For this course, we're going to use Core Drupal, so let's look at how we can add that to our DAMP stack. The first step is we need to download Core Drupal. To do that, we go to drupal.org and click on Download and Extend. We're going to click on the Download Drupal 7 button, and we're going to scroll down to the Downloads area. Now, let's see that we have two different archives that we can download. We're going to need to uncompress these on our local machine, and so if you're on a Windows machine, you might want to use Zip. If you're on a Linux or a Mac OS, you might want to use the Tarball. Being on a Windows machine, we'll go ahead and click Zip and save our download. Now that my archive is downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and place it on my desktop. To do that, I can simply drag it out of the zip area and drag it to my desktop. Now I should note that different OSs handle this differently, the uncompressing of the archive. Windows deals with zip files pretty well, but if you have any problems doing this, you might want to look into a program like 7-Zip or WinRAR that will help you uncompress your files. Now that I have it on my desktop, 
I'm going to go ahead and rename it to a name that's going to match the site that we're going to be building. So I'm going to just change this to Tutorial. What we want to do now is we want to import Core Drupal into our DAMP stack. To do that, we can go back to our control panel, and I can go ahead and select from this menu the More option. And we see that we have two different buttons that we can work with. If I were to select New, what that would do is create a new installation of an Acquia Drupal website. Because we want to use Core, I'm going to go ahead and use the Import button. Now I want to select the files that we saved to our desktop. And I'm going to create a new database since this is a new website. I'm going to go ahead and name this database to match our website name. The last thing I want to do is select a subdomain. I'm going to have that match our website name also. Go ahead and click Import. Now it's doing its magic. Now you see that we've got a new installation of a Drupal 7 website using Core Drupal. The last few steps we have are to work our way through Drupal's installer. On the first page of the installer, you'll notice that we're given two options, a standard and a minimal installation. The standard installation is going to be best for most websites. Minimal is used for advanced users that want to really just use Drupal as a general framework. So we're going to go ahead and use standard and click Save and Continue. The next option we have is what language we want to put Drupal's admin. We're going to go ahead and use English, so we're just going to click Save and Continue. Now what Drupal is doing is it's installing the database information it needs for a beginning install. One of the things that's kind of interesting is that because we're using the DAMP stack, we didn't have to put in any database credentials, which you will have to do when you install Drupal on a regular web server. Now we've got our last form of information we need to work through. I'm going to go ahead and leave the site name localhost. I can change this and all of the other settings on this page later, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave this the way it is. The next thing I need to do is put in a site email. Now this email address is pretty important. This is the one that Drupal used to send its system notifications. It's also used as a default for several other subsystems inside of Drupal. I'm going to go ahead and just put in an example email address. The next things we want to do is we want to create a username for the super user of our site. I'm going to go ahead and use admin. And then for password, I'm also going to go ahead and use admin and admin. Again, I'm using something that's just easy to remember. Because we're using this on a local machine, it's not too important to keep high security. I would not recommend using basic usernames and passwords like this on a production server. So now I'm going to scroll down, and I want to select what country I'm in. We're in the US. And of course, it's reading the default time zone off my computer. That's correct, so I'm going to leave that alone. The last thing that we want to look at is this Update Notifications options. I'm going to go ahead and leave these checked, but what these are about is that from time to time, Drupal Core and contributed modules that you might be using will have different updates. In particular, what's important are when there are security updates, you need to know about these things and patch your system so that you don't develop security holes. You, leaving these box checked will make sure that Drupal automatically checks for this information and can even send me email notifications. I'm going to go ahead and leave those checked and click Save and Continue. Now the installer is done creating our new website. We simply click Visit Your New Site, and we're now landed onto a brand new Drupal site. Installing on your local computer is the easiest way to start working with Drupal. Just a couple years ago, it was fairly tedious to get a web stack running on a PC. Acquia's DAMP stack has now made it as simple as possible. Now that you have your DAMP stack set up, you can play with Drupal till your heart's content.